last year, right before Christmas, National Geographic magazine named the Blessed Virgin Mary as the most powerful woman in the world. It pointed out, and I quote, that as a universal symbol of maternal love, as well as suffering and sacrifice, Mary is often the touchstone of our longing for meaning. Her mantle offers both security and protection. Folks, I'm here this morning to tell you that I really did not need National Geographic magazine to tell me that Mary is the most powerful woman in the world. I have known that all my life. We who come here to the Shrine of the Miraculous Medal know that in heaven we have someone with unlimited power, someone who can help us whenever we need help. And that someone, of course, is our Blessed Mother. All we have to do is to approach her in, in prayer and to ask her to help us, to offer us security and protection. You know, Mary is powerful because she intercedes for us. She intercedes for us to Jesus. And you know, Jesus will never refuse his beloved mother. I believe that whenever we say Mary, Mary says Jesus. In the delightful book, Children's Letters to God, a little girl writes, Dear God, we just heard in Sunday school about the miracle of the parting of the Red Sea. Well, God, my sister Tina has a girlfriend, Wendy, who never stops talking. It would, be, would, it would take a miracle to shut her up. Do you have any left? You know, folks, God has a lot of miracles left. And I believe that he is willing to work those miracles through the intercession of Mary, who really is powerful enough to help us when we need help. Came across this little anecdote, believe it or not, in Reader's Digest. A man was going to bed when his wife told him that he had left the light on in the, go in the garden shed. And he said that he hadn't been in the shed all day. And he looked out the window, and sure enough, he saw two burglars taking things out of the shed. And immediately, he called the police. They, to they told him that no one was in the area, that no one was there ab able to help him. And he politely said, OK. He hung up. And three minutes later, he called the police again. He said, hello? I just rang you a few minutes ago because there were two burglars in my shed. Well, you don't have to worry about them anymore because I just shot them. <laughs> Within five minutes, there were a half a dozen police cars in the area. And of course, they caught the two burglars red-handed. And then one of the policemen went to the man and said, I thought you said you shot them. And the man smiled and said, I thought you said that there was no one available to help me. <laughs> you know, my friends, when we are in trouble and we need help, Mary is always available to help us. All we have to do is to turn to her in prayer and to ask for her motherly help. In an episode of the comic strip Peanuts, it's nighttime and it's very dark outside, and, and, and Linus is walking outside with a lit candle in his hand. And Charlie Brown asks, what's this? And Linus says, I have heard that it is better to light a single candle than to curse the darkness. Now Charlie turns around and he is looking at something. And he says, that's true. 
although there will always be those who will disagree with you. And we now see that he's looking at Lucy, who is shouting out, you stupid darkness, you stupid darkness. In other words, she is cursing the darkness. Folks, on our journey in life, we run into dark period, dark periods. We run into times when we're suffering, when things are going wrong. You know, a loved one gets sick, we get sick, a loved one dies. You know, some people really do curse the darkness, so to speak. So many people get upset with God. When we encounter dark times, it really is better to light a candle. And I, do, I think we do this by turning to Mary and her son in prayer, because I believe that every time we offer a prayer to them, it is like lighting a candle. You know, when I come here to the shrine and I look at the candles burning in front of the statue of our Blessed Mother, I think to myself, each one of these flames represent the fears, sufferings, and heartaches of someone who is invoking the powerful help of our Blessed Mother. And I want to tell you, when I watch you praying in front of the statue of our Blessed Mother, and especially lighting candles, I get the feeling that you're not praying just for yourself. You're praying for others. Tom Lasorda, a good Catholic and former coach of the Los Angeles Dodgers, tells this story. A big game between Los Angeles Do Dodgers and Cincinnati Reds was scheduled on a, for a certain Sunday afternoon in Cincinnati. And in the morning, Lasorda went to Mass. And as he settled down in the pew, the Cincinnati Reds ma manager came into the church and sat right next to him. And the two men simply eyed each other but they didn't say anything to each other. And when, when Mass ended, Lasorda got a, a bit nervous when he saw the Cardinal manager go up to a statue of our Blessed Mother and light a candle. And Lasorda said, I figured that that gave his team an edge over ours. So I waited, and when I saw that he was gone, I went over and blew out the candle. <laughs> Folks, need I tell you, we should never, ever blow out another's candle, so to speak. We should always be ready to light another candle for them. We should bring them to Mary in prayer so that she might use her power to help them. A final thought. According to a very beautiful ancient legend, one day Jesus was making a tour of heaven to make sure that everything was in order and everything was fine. The hedges were trimmed, the grass was cut, the fountains were clean, the gold and the silver and the ivory were polished. And then as he walked along one of the side streets, he came across some people who he thought had no business being in heaven at that time. He thought that they had, should have been serving time in purgatory. So he stormed up to the gate where Peter was checking out the day's intake on his Dell computer. And Jesus said, Simon Peter, what's going on around here? And Peter said, Lord, what have I done now? And Jesus said, well, you let a lot of people come in here who don't belong. And Peter said, I didn't do it. And Jesus asked, well, then who did? And Peter said, you're not going to like it. And Jesus says, tell me anyway. And Peter said, well, I turn them away from the front gate. And they, then they go around to the back gate, and your mother lets them in.
You know what, folks? You know what we're talking about today? About how powerful Mary is. I do believe that our Blessed Mother is so powerful that she is able to get us into the kingdom of heaven. So let us continue our novena. Let us beg Mary the most powerful to pray for us now and at the hour of our death. And the thought comes to me, maybe we should ask her to help us to get into heaven, even if it be through the back gate.